Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on building and deploying a Django 1.7 web server. Um, in this video, we'll go over the entire process from purchasing the server. Um, we're going to be doing that with Linode, all the way up to deploying a 1.7 based Django site out on a domain name on the internet. Um, so if you already have a server, you can skip ahead a little bit. Um, I've just created a Linode account, and I'm going to select this one gig server. It's got one CPU. Um, it's a pretty tiny server. At the same time, it's only ten bucks a month. Um, I'm going to put it in Fremont, California, because I'm close to California. And so now you can see the status is being created. We'll just open up the dashboard here and wait for it to finish. And you can see it right here. So you can see our server status went from being created to brand new. So now we'll deploy an image, um, and I'm going to use CentOS seven. And we're going to set a root password. Now you can see there's a few things in the job queue, so we'll wait for those to finish and then we'll boot up our server. Okay, so now that our job queue is complete, we'll go ahead and boot the server. Alright, so now that our server is running, we'll go to remote access. And here we'll have the IP address of our server, which we'll now be able to SSH into. But first, I'm going to go set up some subdomains on hackedexistence.com uh, because DNS takes a while to propagate, so we'll start that now. So by the time we get, we're get we ready to use those domain names, uh, they'll be propagated out to all the DNS servers. So we'll do htmltest.hackedexistence.com and we'll do a Django test.hackedexistence.com and we're going to use the IP address of our server for both of those and we'll save our zone file. Uh, we'll take our IP address and we'll ssh minus l root into our server. All right, so now the first thing we'll do is set the host name. So we'll do hostname ctl uh, set dash hostname. I'm going to call this hacked existence. All right, now we need to set the time zone for the server. So we'll do time date control. list dash time zones and we'll spacebar through this until we find the time zone we want um, I am in Arizona so I'm going to use America slash Phoenix so I'll copy that quit I'll do time date CTL set dash time zone America slash Phoenix All right now I can type date and you can see the times line up Alright, so now we need to update all of the packages that have gone out of date since the CentOS 7 image uh, was put into production, so we'll do yum update. Okay, and now that our system's all up to date, um, we want to stop using the root user account as soon as we can. So the first thing we'll do is add user, and I'll give my user the username redfish, and we'll give that user account password. Okay, now we want to use uh, the vi sudo command to give redfish sudo capabilities on the system. So we'll do vi sudo. And we'll go almost to the bottom of the file here. And you'll see right here, there's this root user. So we'll copy and paste that. And I'll change this to my user account. Um, and basically, this will allow my user to do anything root can do uh, via sudo. And so at the end of this video, we'll come back and change that to make that a little more secure. Um, but for now, we can exit and SSH back in as our user now. And you can see our host name is now changed to hacked existence. So at this point, if you want, you can set up SSH key pair authentication um, and disable password based authentication. Uh, but I prefer password based. So that's up to you guys. If you guys want to install that, I'm going to skip that. The next thing we want to do is disable the root account from being able to log in over SSH. So we'll do sudo vim slash etsy slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. Um, and this is the first time we've used sudo. So it gives us a little warning. And so in here, uh, I'm just going to search for the word root, and so you can see there's this value permit root login, so we will change that to no, and we'll write that, 
Then we just need to restart the SSH daemon. So we'll do sudo system control restart sshd. And now root's no longer able to SSH into our system. So now we'll throw up a firewall. Um, we want to do sudo yum install IP tables dash services. Okay, so now we'll enable IP tables to start during boot. We'll do sudo system control enable IP tables. And then we'll do sudo system control start IP tables to turn them on. So now we can look at our IP tables with sudo IP tables minus capital L. And you can see SSH is pretty much the only thing that's allowed into our system. So we need to open up a few other ports uh, for our system to function properly. So um, we will put these in a file, sudo vim slash etsy slash iptables.firewall.rules, um, which is an empty file. So on the Linode docs, you can go to this quick start, and they've got a whole bunch of the stuff that we just did, deploying a server, uh, SSHing into it. And then if you go to the securing your server guide, um, this guide's pretty good to get you up and running with LAMP. Um, but here we have this IP tables firewall rules that the people at Linode have put together for us. So that'll make it real easy. And basically, um, this script allows traffic through the following services and ports. So you've got 80 for HTTP traffic, 443 for HTTPS, and 22 for SSH. And it'll also allow ping. So if you want, you can come up in here and change the... Uh, allow ping line, you can just comment that out if you don't want your server to respond to pings. Um, but I'll just leave it the way it is. Okay, so now we need to push those IP tables into the IP tables uh, service that's running. So do sudo IP tables dash restore, left caret, and then we'll give it the file we just made. And then we'll do sudo slash user slash lib exec slash IP tables slash IP tables dot init save so now if we do IP tables uh, minus L which we need to do with sudo you'll see that HTTP HTTPS SSH and ICMP echo which is ping are all now enabled in our firewall okay so at this point uh, this document tells you you can optionally install fail to ban um, so that will ban or blacklist IP addresses that are trying to do dictionary or brute force attacks against uh, authentication mechanisms, stuff like that on your website. So if you want, here's the instructions. You can look them up in this guide uh, to install that, make your site a little more secure if you're worried about brute force attacks. So one of the things that I like to do for my servers is to build a file system hierarchy that really uh, holds all my code in one place. Um, so you're free to use ver www that's built in uh, if you want, but I prefer to uh, kind of build my Django root and my Apache roots uh, right next to each other in their own directory. Um, it allows me to lock down the server and um, I can do things like ch root automatically into that directory for users, stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do... Um, I usually put this folder in the file system root. Um, so I'm going to do sudo make directory he. Now I'm going to do sudo ch own redfish he. Now I'm going to go into he um, and I'm going to make a Django root and a folder called sites to be our Apache root. So now we're going to install Apache. Um, so we need to do all these directories we just made will come in handy in a minute. Um, but we'll do sudo yum install httpd. Okay, so now we're going to do the configuration for Apache. So we're going to do sudo vim slash etc httpd uh, conf slash httpd.conf. And so do. do, do, do. Um, all these file, all these settings are good. Um, you can change your server admin to be your email address if you want to get emails from Apache and have that show up on your error pages.
Okay, so here the default document root for Apache is var www html. Um, ours is going to be he sites. Okay, so again, we're going to put he sites here. Okay, now there's this second directory, which is actually going to be the Apache root. Um, so I'm going to start by deleting all these comments here. They take up a lot of room. And basically what I'm going to do is highlight all of this and copy it, um, because now I'm going to delete it, and we're going to go paste it into another folder or another file. Okay, so now we will write our Apache config. Okay, so now we'll make the file for Apache that's going to hook up our domain name uh, and pass that off to Apache so that requests coming into our uh, server get routed the right way. So we're going to do sudo vim slash etc httpd conf.d and for this one we'll start by setting up uh, let's do html test.hacked existence.com dot conf and we'll paste uh, that directory that we had because we'll use that in a minute here but back over here on our Linode uh, docs if we go to hosting a website um, which for some reason takes us to Node.js but if we go back to web server guides and go to hosting a website um, you will see right here we can copy all of this and paste this and that's our example.com.conf so we'll start by getting rid of some of these comments here um, so if you want you can put your email address in there um, and our server name it's going to be HTML test.hackedexistence.com. And we'll get rid of the server alias because we don't have one. Okay, so we can get rid of directory index. Um, our document root is going to be he sites HTML test.hackedexistence.com slash htdocs. And we'll get rid of that. Okay, so our error logs. We're gonna put in var log httpd html test.hackedexistence.com dash error dot log. And we'll do the same thing for access log. Okay, so now we need to give Apache the ability to get into there. So it's going to be he sites html test.hackedexistence.com slash htdocs. All right, so we'll write that. We'll do sudo Apache control restart and we'll do sudo system control enable httpd.service so that it automatically starts at boot okay so now we'll go create an index file um, to see if that works so we'll go to cd slash he slash sites slash h oh, we haven't even created that yet so now we need to make that directory so mkdir html test dot hackedexistence.com cd into there make a directory called htdocs cd into there um, we'll vim index.html and we'll just make a quick little site here this is the head body this is the body Okay, so sudo server uh, Apache control restart, 
and let's see if that worked now. So if we go to HTML test existence.com, good. This is the head, this is the body. Cool. So now Apache is up and serving our websites. The next thing we need to do is install MySQL. So CentOS uses MariaDB, um, which my understanding is that it's a fork of MySQL with uh, a few extra plugins, stuff like that, optimizations. Um, so it's basically the same thing as MySQL. So we're going to do sudo yum install MariaDB-server and MariaDB. Okay, we'll do sudo system control enable mariadb.service and I'll do sudo system control start mariadb.service I'll do sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation and so we don't have a root password set up yet but we'll set one right now uh, we'll go ahead and remove the anonymous user, we'll disallow the root login, um, and we'll remove test databases, um, we'll reload the privileges, and we're up and running. So now we'll test it if we do mysql minus u root minus p, uh, minus p is for password, so now we'll type in the password we just created, and you can see we're here. So we'll control D. Okay, so now we need to install PHP. So we'll do sudo yum install php php pair and php mysql. Okay, so we'll sudo vim slash etsy slash php.ini and let's look through our php ini file. Okay, so we want to search for error underscore log. And here's an error log setting. So I'm going to change this to be slash bear slash log slash php slash error dot log. Um, that way we'll actually write our log errors. Okay, and that's the only change we need to make to that. So now we have to create that directory. So we'll do sudo mkdir fair log php. And then we want the Apache user to be able to write into there. So we'll do sudo ch own apache fair log php. So now we'll do sudo system control restart httpd. Okay, so now we'll go create a PHP page and see if we can load it. So we'll cd he sites html test htdocs. Um, so this is our Apache root. So here we'll do vim info.php and we'll just make a quick little PHP script here that just runs PHP info. Write it. Apache control restart and now we'll see if that worked. So we should be able to go to HTML test.hacked existence.com slash info.php and there's our PHP server info. So now we'll remove that file um, because we don't want that sitting out there. But we have now verified that PHP is installed and running. So now we'll install PHP my admin. Um, so we need to add the EPEL repo. So what I do for that is go to google.com, type in EPEL. That stands for Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux. And so on this page, we want to go find the newest version of EL7. And we're going to copy this link here. And back in our terminal, we'll run sudo rpm minus i capital U V H and then we'll paste the URL there. Now we'll do sudo yum update. And now we can do sudo yum install php my admin. OK, 
Okay, now we'll edit the configuration for PHP my admin. So we'll do sudo vim slash etsy slash httpd slash conf dot d slash php my admin dot conf. Okay, so if you want, um, you can change the IP address here. Um, basically, right now, the way that this file is set up is it's only going to allow connections from the local host. Um, that's the way I prefer it. If you want, you can add an IP address to people who can get to PHP My Admin, um, but I prefer it to be only local host. And I'll show you guys in a minute here how to create an SSH tunnel that'll allow us to do some port forwarding to get to PHP my admin on the server um, that keeps it really secure because you have to have SSH access to get to PHP my admin. Okay, so now we need to restart Apache to have PHP my admin dot conf take effect. So we'll do sudo Apache control restart. Okay, now we'll log out, we'll log back in doing some port forwarding and we'll make sure we can hit PHP my admin. So if we exit um, in our SSH command, we'll do SSH minus capital L 8080 colon localhost colon 80. Um, and so basically what that does is it takes port 8080 on our local machine and port forwards it to the remote local host on port 80. So using that, we can go over here and see. So if we go to HTML test dot existence.com you can see our sites up if we go to slash PHP my admin you can see we're forbidden but if we go to localhost colon 8080 so our localhost on port 8080 is forwarding to the remote localhost port 80 so now we can log into PHP at my admin so we'll only be able to log into it if we SSH with uh, port forwarding. So now we can log in root. And we're into PHP my admin. Okay, so next we're going to install Django. So the first thing we'll do is run Python to see what version. We've got 275. That'll work with Django, so I'm just going to leave Python the way it is. Um, so the first thing we'll do is install mod WSGI, which is the link between Apache and Python. So we'll do sudo yum install mod WSGI. And now we need to install Django. So we'll do sudo yum install python-pip. And then we'll use pip to actually install Django. So now we'll do sudo pip install Django. Okay, so we'll cd to slash he slash django, and in here we will run django-admin.py start project, and we'll call it django test. So now you can see there's a django test folder. Inside of there we have manage and another folder called django test, which has the base for our website. Okay, so now we'll set up the django test subdomain to point at this uh, instance of a django site. So we'll go to slash etc slash httpd slash conf dot d. And you can see in here we have our old HTML test. So we'll just copy that um, and we'll paste it as django test dot hacked existence dot com. But we need to do that with sudo because it's owned by root. So now if we sudo vim django test. So here I'm going to use a little bit of Vim magic. Basically we need to replace everything that says HTML test with Django test. Uh, so we're going to do colon percent s slash HTML test slash Django test slash G. And there we go. Now they all say Django test. Okay, so we need to add some WSGI stuff to this file. So we'll add WSGI script alias slash and we'll point that to slash he django django test django test wsgi.py and that's a file that already exists it was created by django admin okay outside of our virtual host here we'll do a wsgi python path and slash he django django test 
Okay, and the last thing that we need to do is add in another directory slash he Django Django test Django test and we need to add a files wsgi.py and we're going to do require all granted close files close directory Okay, now we'll sudo apache control restart. Okay, and the last thing that we need to do is make sure that our Django test.hackedexistence.com file ends with the extension .com. So we're going to move that to .conf and we have to sudo to do that. All right, now we should be able to run apache control restart. Alright, it looks like there's a syntax error on line 20. It looks like require is spelled wrong. So, we'll vim Django test. And that would be right here. Require Apache control restart. And now we should be able to get to Django test.hackedexistence.com. You can see it worked. If we go to slash admin, we have an admin page up and running. Okay, so now we have to set up the databases in our settings.py. So let's exit out of here. We'll see the HE Django, Django test, Django test. And we'll vim our settings. So here you can see they have some database stuff built in. We're going to change this to MySQL. And then over here in the Django docs. So if you just go to djangoproject.com and click on documentation, it'll bring you here. If you search for settings, you'll see the full list of settings. And over here, you can go to databases on the right. And here's all the options you can do with databases. There's tons of them, depending on what kind of database you want to use um, and how you want to use it. For MySQL, um, since it's running on localhost, we only need a name, a user, and a password. So I'll copy those. We'll delete this line. So the database name will be Django test DB. The user will be Django test user. And now we have to go create those. So over our SSH tunnel, we'll go into databases and PHP my admin, Django test DB, create that. Go back home. Go to users, and we will add a new user. This will be called Django test user. Uh, we're only going to let them connect from localhost, and we'll just generate a password. So we'll copy that password and paste it here. All right, so we should be done with the settings file. Um, real quick, we'll give all the privileges on this database. Okay, so now that we've set up our database, we'll restart Apache for those settings to take control. Sudo Apache control restart. Okay, so now um, we need to install the interface between Python and MySQL so that manage.py can do its database magic. So we'll do sudo yum install MySQL dash Python. All right, so now um, if we go back up one directory where we have manage.py, we'll be able to run Python, manage.py, make migrations, no changes. So now we should be able to run syncdb, if I could spell it right. This is the first time you run syncdb. Let's create Django. Uh, Admin user, I'll just use my built-in, I'll be asdf at asdf.com. 
and a password. All right, so now I should be able to go here and log in. And here we are, but you can see all of our static files are broken. So now we need to set up static content. So we'll do python manage.py collect static. And you'll see we have an error. Um, we don't have a static root setting. So we need to go back into that Django test, pull up our settings again. And down here where it says static URL, um, we're going to add a static root. That's going to be slash he sites django test dot hacked existence dot com slash ht docs slash static. Okay, so now we need to create that directory. So we'll do mkdir he sites django test hacked existence.com slash htdocs slash static all right so we haven't created any of that structure yet so we'll go in here and we'll make django test dot hacked existence.com and we'll make htdocs And we'll go in there and we'll make static. Okay, so now that directory is created. Now we need to add an Apache alias to that. So we're going to do sudo vim etc httpd conf dot d django test dot hacked existence dot com dot conf. And inside of this virtual host, we will add an alias to slash static. And that's going to be he sites django test dot hacked existence dot com ht docs static okay so let's restart apache let's let those changes take effect and now we should be able to run collect static so we'll go cd he django Django test, Django test, not too far, go back up one. Python manage.py collect static. Yes, so you can see it's copied all of this uh, JavaScript, CSS, images and stuff into our static folder. So now if we refresh, we have CSS. So now we have a fully running Django website, it worked. Congratulations, we have an admin that we can log into. Um, we're completely up and running. Um, we have a website on a different domain. Hosted on the same web server. Um, so the last thing to do is trim down our sudo a little bit. So we'll start by saying sudo which Apache control. And so we will copy that and we'll do sudo minus s to become root vi sudo. And down here, almost at the bottom, we will change this to let run redfish run as root. Um, and we'll put a space here. Do no passwd colon. So this will allow redfish to run as root without a password, only this command with this argument. So let's go ahead and, and write that. So now if I do sudo ls, you can see I'm not allowed to run that. If I do sudo system control, nothing. If I do sudo uh, apache control restart, I can do that, but I can't stop it. Um, I can't sudo minus s anymore. So anytime I need to be root, I can do su and type in root's password. 
which is different than my user's password and I can still do all my root things now my user can run sudo patchy control restart without putting without putting a password in so our systems pretty decently locked down at this point alright well I hope you guys enjoyed how to build Django 1.7 and deploy it on a web server uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned